This is a 3D printed Statue of Liberty that I made yesterday. Now Lady Liberty here is only 4 centimeters tall, which is a little over an inch and a half, and is made of a corn-based biodegradable plastic called polylastic acid, or PLA. To give you an idea of how tiny this model is, the actual size of the Statue of Liberty is over 1800 times larger and took 9 years to reassemble, while this was created in about an hour. Now unlike the actual Statue of Liberty, this was much easier to make. This model was printed on an FDM, or also known as a Fused Deposition Modeling Printer. The process has also been more recently called FFF, Fused Filament Fabrication Printing. What this means is that the printer will heat a thermoplastic, in our case PLA, to a controlled melting point and deposit the plastic layer by layer, while moving up in the Z direction. I used a program called Kira, a beginner slicing software, where the model is placed on a blue checkered ground, which represents the printing bed. After I had adjusted the size to my liking, and after heating up the hot end so that the spool of plastic, which was placed on the filament spool holder, could come through the extruder and onto the printing bed, I then began the printing process. This works by the printer placing down layer after layer of plastic. Each layer of plastic is cooled as it comes to the hot end by a little computer fan that is attached to it. After nearly an hour, precisely 56 minutes, it was complete. But as you can probably tell, it didn't come out quite perfectly. And this is no fault but my own. Just like the actual Statue of Liberty, this model has a lot of overhangs. For example, just below the arm and on multiple areas of her dress. The printer tries to address this problem by placing little platforms that it makes itself so that it has an area to work upon. But here's the catch. This model was so tiny that the plastic that was coming through this little nozzle, which has a diameter of 1.75 millimeters, was too big for the upper part of the statue. So as it was building these little platforms, it was melting onto the statue itself. Now notice how I said the upper part of the statue. If you look at the platform that the statue stands on, that all looks great. In fact, it's incredibly detailed. But the rest came out as a complete mess. Now I do have a plan, and I'm going to try to make this statue again, but I'll address that at the end of this video. Anyways, while I was messing around with this 3D printer, I started to wonder if there was any other way that we could print something bigger. Maybe instead of using plastic, we could use other materials that we could possibly use to make buildings and other large structures. And this all led me to where most of my curiosity leads me, the internet. And it turns out I'm not the first person to have this idea. Over the past couple of years, multiple entrepreneurs have taken it upon their shoulders to create structures without even lifting a finger. And it turns out that there's quite a few people. People have been building 3D structures from Amsterdam to Dubai, and from New York to Moscow. The first one I want to talk about is the creation of Ma Yahao with his construction team in China. They are currently building, or should I say printing, homes made of a mixture of cement and construction waste. Now by the looks of it, they aren't the most amazing structures, but what makes it so spectacular to me is their cheap cost, the efficiency at which they are built, and the fact that they are environmentally friendly. To obtain metal stones, we need mining, digging up blocks of stones, and sewing them into pieces. The whole mining and manufacturing process is damaging our environment badly. But with 3D printing, we are not polluting the environment. Instead, we are recycling materials, and by using a special treatment, we can turn them into materials like this. We can provide building materials according to the customer's needs. Any thickness in any color in large sizes is fast and cheap. These homes only cost a little over $5,000 to make, which when compared to the cost of an apartment in the highly populated areas in China, which could run up to $600 of rent a month, is incredibly cheap. Everything you see here besides the roof and the window has been entirely 3D printed. And the fact that it has been made partly out of waste makes it that much more cost efficient and friendly towards the environment. The parts of the home are assembled off site using a ginormous concrete 3D printer. It works in the exact same fashion as any other 3D printer, except in this case, it's lying down layer by layer of cement, not plastic. And according to the company, they can make 10 of these structures in 24 hours. But probably the most amazing thing about this effort is that it creates cheap, cost-effective, easy-to-assemble, affordable housing. But it turns out that this team isn't the only one trying to 3D print homes, and in fact, there is a team 60 miles south of Moscow trying to achieve the exact same thing, by the name Apis Core. 
Just like the team in China, these structures are made of concrete. Now, in my opinion, these homes look much cooler. They kind of have a futuristic look to them. But what makes this project unique is that unlike the team in China, it is all assembled on site, cutting away the cost of assembly and transportation. Although they are a bit more pricey, just a little more than $10,000, and it is constructed in 24 hours. Nonetheless, you certainly get the bang for your buck, with a fully furnished interior along with some Samsung appliances. But can it get even bigger and more massive? Well, if you want to answer that question, China is the place to be. Just a couple of years ago, they constructed a 3D printed six story apartment building, and recently, a company by the name Hushuan Tunga printed a 4,035 square foot mansion. It is absolutely spectacular. It took just a little over 45 days to build, and they say it's durable enough to withstand an earthquake measuring 8.0 on the Richter scale. Amazingly, this mansion was all constructed on site, and as the article states, the ambitious company printed the house using 20 tons of strong but inexpensive concrete, although they say that any type of cement could be utilized in their process. The walls are up to 8 feet thick, and once they were printed, workers painted and decorated the house. According to Hushang Tanga, this technology will have an immeasurable social benefits because of its speed, low cost, simple, and environmentally friendly raw materials. It can generally improve the quality of people's lives. The company envisions their technology being used to build everything from homes for farmers in rural areas, to high-rise buildings, to houses in developing countries. They believe the technology could spark a revolution in the housing industry, as their 3D printed homes can be built faster and for less money than traditional dwellings. And that right there is what makes me think that this might be the next great thing for humanity. The last time a global survey was attempted by the United Nations in 2005, an estimated 100 million people were homeless worldwide, and as many as 1.6 billion people lacked adequate housing. 3D printing could change that. It's cheap and affordable. Millions of people across the world, from homeless veterans in the United States to refugees fleeing their war-torn countries, could be helped by this. And if you want to see how this technology is even helping us right now, go check out the first link inside the description. It lists multiple projects that are already finished or are underway using 3D printing. This is truly the technology of the future, and that future is now. So the main part of the video has ended, but like I said, I want to return to Lady Liberty. So, what I've done to address the problem is that I'm planning to make the layer height, which is, as you saw in the paper, basically how much um, uh, plastic that is put down for each layer. I put that at 0.2 rather than what I originally did was 0.1. The reason why I'm doing that is because if I put it at 0.1, because I'm doubling the size of Lady Liberty now, that's going to be my plan. Um, just so it makes it easier for the printer because like I said, you know, the bigger it is it will have a easier time But uh, if I put it at 0 0.1 it would take a really long time because that that looks really detailed um, So I'm putting it at 0 0.2 obviously because it's a larger structure now um, I've kept the shelf thickness the same and the fill density I'm leaving it the same as well because 30% is just perfect That's and for anyone who didn't pause the paper again to see look at that paper again Which I highly recommend you do feel free to go back to that but on um, the fill density is basically how how much um, plastic is going to be put inside the structure and what that's basically used for stability so like I don't know if you were to per se drop it or if the thing were like it, I guess in some cases it can fall apart um, very rare I don't think that actually can really happen though just because it hardens so quickly but you know it's just for like extra safety because I guess it can snap you know if there's not enough um, fil filament in there um, but anyways uh, the print speed I'm leaving the same and of course the temperature you always leave the same but what, what I'm going to do a little bit differently, um, I'm going to have the the support type I had is everywhere. I might change that to just add it to where it needs it most because I don't want to have to deal with all that filament. But I've been advised um, not to do that because you still need those support structures. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm just doubling the size and I'm going to make it, um, you know, th that much easier for myself. But it, it should all be good. Um, and as you can see, it, it shouldn't take that long. It should only be an hour and 37 minutes, as Kira estimates. Um, but, you know, and it, it's only 18 grams. It's going to be very light, as usual, with most 3D printed things. So it should be totally worth it. 
Um, and that's what I'm planning to do next. And I'll get back to you guys on that when it's finished. Um, but yeah, that's it for the video. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. This was so much fun to learn about and do research on. And if I'm not, I'm gonna be honest. From what it looks like, this might be one of the best bite-sized episodes, yeah. So yeah, thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you again later.